I've never had fried chicken in my life. You people love the fried chicken. You have a very narrow assessment of me, Tony. Yeah, right? I'm good. It's a scene out of the Oscar-nominated film Green Book that in real life is still up for debate more than a half a century later. Academy Award winner Mahershala Ali plays Dom Shirley, otherwise known as Doc Shirley, a classical jazz pianist of Jamaican descent who also earned a doctorate in music, psychology, and liturgical arts. The Doc rose to prominence in the 1940s, composing orchestras and playing the world over. I met him when I was five. I remember when I walked into his studio apartment over Carnegie Hall. He had a throne, these floor to ceiling windows. It was like Liberace meets Beethoven. And he came out in this long African robe. And he was very, very interested in my father as a family. But a tour in the 60s through the Jim Crow South would prompt the prodigy to hire a white bodyguard to chauffeur him. Enter Tony Lip Vallelonga, played by Viggo Mortensen. He was an Italian-American bouncer from the Bronx, whom Doc Shirley hired. He earned the name Lip from, well, all that lip. What other experience do you have? Public relations. Do you foresee any issues in working for a black man? You and the Deep South, there's gonna be problems. The movie follows the two as Tony Lip, who is depicted as a casual racist, gets to know Doc Shirley as a man and reshapes his view. Before their journey, Doc's record label gives Lip the Green Book, based off of the Negro Motorist Green Book, which was published from 1936 to 1966. Author and cultural historian Candace Taylor has been chronicling the actual story of the Negro Motorist Green Book. She spoke to CBS this Sunday morning. It was after the Depression, before the war, the auto culture was really burgeoning. There were more jobs for black people. During that time, African Americans were encouraged to buy cars if they could in order to avoid segregation and embarrassment on public transportation. Victor Hugo Green, a black postal worker from New York City, came up with the guide to businesses in the South, where black people could safely eat, gas up, and lodge. Ken Dacey has visited more than 9,600 Green Book sites across 48 states. A lot of people assume that the Green Book only featured places that were either small tourist homes or downtrodden motels or places that really didn't have you know, much to offer, that it was kind of black people got what was left over. And that's not really true. I mean, the Bel Air Hotel in Los Angeles was listed in the Green Book. The Waldorf Astoria was listed in the Green Book. It also helped black travelers avoid possibly deadly encounters in what were known then as sundown towns, white-only areas in the North and South, where black people were not welcome after dark. Tony Lip's real-life son, no. Nick Vallelonga, co-wrote the picture. This was a big story that my father told me, and something I had on my mind basically my whole life. And luckily, I had tape recorded my father. He said he'd long waited to make a film about his dad and Doc Shirley. According to Nick, the Doc granted his request with one condition. I got back in touch with Dr. Shirley as an adult and got his side of the story. He wanted me to tell the whole story, everything that he told me and everything my father said, and he said he wanted to wait until he had passed away. We had a lot of material to go with, hours of tapes, and we also had all the letters that he had written home on the trip. So we went through the letters and we went through the tapes and we listened to the story. Dr. Shirley's family says most of the movie is indeed not true or embellished. Speaking to A1's Movie Club right before the film's release last fall, 82-year-old Maurice Shirley, Doc's youngest and last living brother, told the podcast he refused to watch it because it's full of lies, that Doc wasn't estranged from his family or the black community, and that he definitely had fried chicken before. Doc's niece, Carol Kimball, echoed the sentiment, calling Green Book, quote, a white man's depiction of a black man's life. The film also includes a gay sexual encounter Shirley allegedly had during the tour. Nick said Shirley never came out in real life. Vallelonga maintains the story is true and that they only bent the timelines. In real life, the pair's trip only lasted about two months. In the movie, it adds up to about a year. And Tony Lip became an actor with roles in Goodfellas, Donnie Brasco, oh, no. and The Sopranos. Come on, come on, come on. Doc Shirley continued to write, compose, and record. The only two people who can truly refute or confirm what's factual in the movie, Doc Shirley and Tony Lip, both died in 2013 within months of each other. Green Book is up for five Oscars, including Best Picture.
For InsideEdition.com, I'm Stephanie Officer.